Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to genetic screening, DNA probes, locating specific alleles, screening for many diseases, and then we'll finish with a summary. So many human diseases that we suffer are caused by mutations to genes. So we know that if there's a mutation to a particular part of the genome, it can lead to a disease. And a mutation is a change in that genetic structure and order of nucleotides. DNA sequencing, where we look at the order of nucleotides in a particular length of DNA, has allowed scientists to determine which mutations can cause or predispose individuals to certain diseases. For example, after DNA sequencing, we realise that on chromosome number 11, on the beta globin gene, a particular type of substitution from an A to a T nucleotide led to sickle cell disease. In another example, on chromosome 7, the gene for CFTR became faulty if there was a particular mutation where there was a deletion in some of the nucleotides. So by looking at all the DNA, scientists have realised certain mutations lead or predispose people to certain diseases. Individuals who tend to have a family history of disease might decide to undergo genetic screening. So for example, Huntington's disease is a particular genetic condition and some people might want to have a genetic screening to see if they might get Huntington's disease or if their parents or their children would have it too. So genetic screening is the study of an individual's DNA to identify whether an individual possesses alleles associated with a genetic disease. So you could be looking at the genome of your own cells and seeing if you have any genes that link you to disease or if those of your parents or your children would do the same. And scientists can genetically screen individuals by locating specific alleles of a gene using DNA probes. So what are DNA probes? A DNA probe is basically a short section of DNA which is complementary to a known DNA sequence. So basically, if we're looking for a particular gene that may be linked to a disease, in order to detect whether someone has this, we use something called a DNA probe which as you can see is a short section of DNA and it's complementary to that particular gene we're trying to identify. The probes themselves are labeled so that they can be easily identified using fluorescence or radioactivity. So if they're fluorescent, they light up and give off certain visible wavelengths or signals. If they're radioactive, then they tend to contain a radioactive phosphate ion or phosphate group in their backbone, which is P32, and that can be picked up as well. The fluorescent probes are visualized as they emit light at a different wavelength when certain lights shine on them. So here's a probe that would be fluorescent, and particular light is shone on that fluorescent probe, and it gives off different light depending on the different wavelengths. The radioactive probes can be visualized as they expose X-ray film. So if that probe was present, we would see lines appear on X-ray films, indicating that that's where the probe is. So how can we use DNA probes to locate specific alleles or genes that people might have to see if they have that gene that links to a disease. So the DNA probes are used to locate a mutant allele which causes a specific disease and it's done so with the following stages. So first of all, the sequence of the mutant allele is determined by DNA sequencing or by finding the DNA sequence in a genetic database. So if someone has a particular chance of having a disease and they want to know if they have it, first of all we need to know the sequence of that risky allele or the mutant allele by either sequencing or if it's already been sequenced in the past at some point, we can just look at what the sequence is using a database. And lots of computers are able to store this information in bioinformatics. And then a probe is made by synthesizing a fragment of DNA which has a complementary base sequence to the mutant allele. So say we know that the mutant allele has a particular nucleotide arrangement, T, G, C, C, T, A, and on and on and on. In order to detect this, we need to make a probe which is complementary to the mutant. So if this was TGC, we need to make this ACG, and so on and so forth. So the probe is complementary. This DNA probe is then labelled with a fluorescent marker. So the mutant allele is not labelled, but the probe gets one of these fluorescent markers or radioactive markers. We then amplify the DNA probe using PCR to produce many copies of that probe. So the probe's been made, it's complementary to the mutant allele that we're looking for, and it's ready to bind if it will be somewhere. We put it through PCR and we amplify it so we've got lots and lots of copies of that probe. And then many copies of DNA from the person who's being screened are then heated until they denature and separate into single strands. So what we're doing here is essentially we have the individual and we're trying to see if they have the mutant allele. So what we need to do is take a copy of their genome and usually we don't just take one copy of DNA, we amplify it to make many copies. 
And this is done in PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. So at this point, what we do is we heat up the DNA copies so that they denature into single strands. Otherwise, any probes that we're using to detect that mutant allele won't have anything to bind to. And remember, that probe is going to be complementary to the mutant allele if it ever comes across it. And when it does come across it, it's going to bind and show up with its fluorescence. The separated single DNA strands are mixed with the DNA probes. Both of these have now been copied to make large numbers and the temperature is lowered. So the single DNA strands are now floating around. So the entire genome in its single strand form is floating around. The temperature is dropped and we also have probes going around in the mixture too. The reason we drop the temperature is because now if the probe does come in contact with the correct mutant allele, it will bind and the temperature isn't too hot to pull them apart again. So if the individual does have the mutant allele, the probe which is complementary to it will bind to the DNA fragments which are complementary, so it will bind to that mutant allele. And in this process, it's called hybridization. So here's the mutant allele from the patient and it's been copied many times. The probe comes along, which has also been copied many times, and the probe is complementary to that known sequence from the information we had in step one. The probe is complementary to the mutant allele, so they bind in the process of hybridization. The reason we call it hybridization is because hybrids combine two different things, and we've got original DNA combining with a new synthetic probe DNA. So we have a hybrid section of DNA. The DNA mixture then gets washed clean of any unattached probes, so any probes that didn't bind get washed away. Otherwise, when we see their signal coming off, we might think that they're bound to a gene, but actually they're just the probes on their own. So we have to get rid of them so that these free probes won't give off any false signals. The hybridized DNA is then detected because of the presence and the intensity of the fluorescence. So say we have three individuals going through the sequencing process. And on the y-axis, we've got the fluorescence intensity. So say for individual three, we have no fluorescence. What this means is that no probes bound to the DNA, so we had all their DNA floating around, and when we washed it with all those probes, none of them bound. There was no complementary place for them to bind to, which meant that there were no mutant alleles. So this means that patient 3 is okay. 2 and 1, however, do have fluorescence, which means that at some point the probe came along and it found the complementary region, which would have been that mutant allele. It bound, and then all the free ones got washed away, but this one stuck onto it and gave off the fluorescence signal. In patient two, it's only got one allele, which would be a mutant. Patient one has two alleles because it's twice as intense in its fluorescence. So whenever you see a fluorescence which is twice as big, you've got a patient with twice as many mutant alleles as the other patient. Individuals can be screened for many different genetic diseases at the same time. And this is done by fixing hundreds of different DNA probes in an array on a glass slide. So this is our glass slide. And when you look, we've got all these little holes and these little holes can hold DNA probes. And each of those probes are going to be looking for a specific disease. Say the green one's looking for disease A, the red one might be looking for disease B. And hopefully you can see that with all the diseases that we know, all of these holes will each have their own type of probe looking for a particular mutant allele that binds to them, which is complementary, which is linked to a disease. So these DNA probes are complementary to sequences of DNA, which are known mutations causing genetic disorders. So remember the probe is always complementary to a particular mutant allele. So all of those probes in different holes across the glass slide will be complementary to a specific and different DNA allele. The DNA probes are designed to only fluoresce or only show up when they are bound to a DNA fragment by hybridization. So if the mutant allele came along and was placed on top of those DNA probes and it happened to be the allele that is complementary to this probe, then it will give off a signal. So what happens is many copies of DNA from the individual which is being tested are then added to the glass slide. So the glass slide is ready, all the different probes looking for different mutant alleles are pointing up. We have copies of DNA from the patient and the person wanting their genes to be tested. And it's basically added all over the glass slide. So every single hole of probes is exposed to the whole genome. If any of the DNA fragments are complementary to a specific probe, it's going to bind and the probe will fluoresce. So say for example, this hole here had a particular probe which was complementary to a mutant allele which was linked to a particular disease. If we look at all of the finished result and there's a fluorescence coming from this particular area, then what this means is that the genes that were washed over this had that mutant allele because it was complementary to the probe and now the probe lights up, indicating this person has that mutant allele. So this means that the tested individual is carrying that mutation. And again, if we have twice as much fluorescence in this one as there is in this one, this means this person has two alleles of the mutant form, and this one only has one. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.